Pachaxa Knight Winnipeg would like to acknowledge that we are in Treaty 1 territory and that the land on which we are gathered is the traditional territory of Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We recognize that the process of reconciliation between Indigenous peoples and the government of Canada has yet to be fully resolved. And as such, we at Pachakcha Night will continue to acknowledge this to remind ourselves of the prevailing presence of Indigenous peoples on these lands and the inequities that they faced and continue to endure. Oh my God. Oh, it's been so long, you guys. Oh my goodness. Hold on. <laughs> can you guys see me? I think you guys can. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure. Let, let me just see what Chad is saying up here. Uh, I think so. I think my, my player's a little behind. There we are. Okay. There I am. Okay. I'm a little behind. So uh, if you are chatting, I'll probably see it um, maybe 10 seconds later, but that's okay. Uh, okay, hi. Uh, my name is Justin Ladia. I am uh, a graphic designer and the city host and organizer of Pachak Tonight Winnipeg. Uh, welcome everyone to volume 43 of this event uh, happening online here up on YouTube. So thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, I see everyone in chat. Uh, hello to everyone that's that said hi so far. By the way, uh, we do have Mark Dytham today, uh, who is one of the the principles of Klein Dytham architecture, who developed this um, uh, this format that that you're you're going to be enjoying in a moment. So, hello, Mark and Christina, who is uh, a good friend of the Winnipeg chapter, who also works for Pachacha. So, please give them a warm welcome uh, in chat. So, hello, thank you so much. We are also to be besides being on YouTube right now, we are also uh, currently on the front page of the Pachacha Night website. Uh, the official uh, headquarters uh, website uh, at www.pachakchanight.com. So if you are watching from there, hello to you. Thank you so much for being curious about uh, Winnipeg's creative community. Uh, thank you uh, for being here. I really appreciate it. We're, we're just a small little town uh, that's, uh, you know, well, we're, we're a city technically, but we, we're, uh, we're, pretty, we're a pretty tiny city that gets really cold. So uh, your warmth and being... And being here really helps us, even though it is uh, kind of summerish right now. Well, spring, it doesn't matter. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure you guys are anxious to get this going. Uh, it's been a long time. The last time we had this um, Mia Renaissance ad. Thank you, Mark. That's, that's really kind of you. I appreciate that. Uh, the last time we had this was for the Black Label Winnipeg Takeover, which was last year. Uh, so I'm glad to see that there are 77 of you watching right now on YouTube. So thank you so much. Uh, that that's about on par for what we had last time. Uh, so thank you so much for coming back and, and, uh, believing in us and, and watching the show and, I, and our speakers, uh, are going to come out and say hi. So speakers come out for a second and wave to everybody. Let me stop sharing for a sec. So you can see there's Shantae and Michael and Carl and Rael and Kyla, Oliver and Sherry. They will be coming up in just a few minutes with Oliver, Oliver going first, but we'll get to that in a moment. Thank you, speakers. Uh, cams off for a second while I go through the intro part. Uh, thank you. Let's see. Let me get back to this. 
perfect. Uh, all right. So, uh, okay. So let's let's get through it. Uh, first of all, if you aren't familiar, if this is your first time at uh, watching this event. Uh, there is a little bit of confusion with how to pronounce the name. It is a Japanese name, so there is a little bit of finessing with how you pronounce it. You pronounce it with three syllables, with the middle one being pretty tough, pretty hard, I should say. So uh, it's pechakcha with the K bouncing to the next syllable to make that to make an illusion of a U. So pechakcha, and you can say pechakcha. I don't, I don't mind. It's it's absolutely fine. You can say it however you want, as long as we know you're talking about the twenty by twenty format. Well, I mean. And that, that we can kind of hear that you're saying pachacha. It doesn't matter. It's fine. <laughs> but there it is. That's how you pronounce it. Um, pachacha, of course, is uh, this is the official chapter, Winnipeg's official chapter of Pachacha Night. Uh, it is, has been brought to Winnipeg thanks to the Graphic Designers of Canada Manitoba chapter. Um, and they are the professional association that brought, like I said, Pachacha Night to Winnipeg. GDC, of course, is Canada's National Association for Design Professionals. The Manitoba chapter supports and advances the design profession through advocacy, education, community building, and CGD certification. If you'd like to know more about uh, GDC Manitoba or figure out how, to want, how you would join, if you are a grad or, or a graphic designer yourself, you can go to gdc.design slash mb or join gdc.mb.ca for more information. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook at GDCMB. Uh, but if you want to follow us on Instagram, be sure to put that that uh, period after the C, GDC.MB, uh, if you want to know more about us there. Uh, there has been a bit of a change since the uh, board was presented last time. We'd like to give our warmest thank yous and appreciation to Sam Posnick, who stepped down as the vice president uh, this year. Uh, they've been instrumental in a lot of the things we've done in the last couple of years. So thank you so much, Sam, for being here and helping out at the GDC during your time. But uh, the people that are currently on the board is our Dean Vandewall, who's president, Aquila Sampson, who is the treasurer, Leticia Spence, our secretary, Tess Bowie, the communications chair. We have Doug Coates, who runs memberships, Josh Dudek, who is the education chair, Isla Manning, the events chair, and there's me. That's me just the organizer. Uh, okay, so if you are interested in speaking at the next volume, whether it be virtual or in person, and I don't know when that's going to be, but uh, please consider sending us an email at pachakchanightwinnipeg at gmail.com. Uh, again, that's pachakchanightwinnipeg at gmail.com, or you can just reach out to us on our social media feeds. Uh, Isla's give. <laughs> Isla says the president looks a little different these days. You know what? We're not going to talk about that. They look perfect the way they are. Thank you, Isla. Uh, right, and of course, Pachakcha Night is a volunteer-run event, and uh, we wouldn't be here now if it weren't for the the uh, efforts of our uh, our few volunteers that we have here. Uh, so thank you to Aiden Wilson. I mean, there's me, but there's also thank you to Aiden Wilson, who was a speaker scout and did our motion graphics. Uh, Isla Manning, who's our speaker scout and one of the moderators in chat. So he'll say hello to Isla in chat if you are. All our moderators have a blue wrench next to their name. So please be nice to them. Uh, I can't control what they do. No. They'll, they'll be nice too, don't worry. Just you know, just control yourselves in chat over there. Uh, Oliver Oike is the speaker scout and the city host emeritus. Ariel Villarin is a speaker scout. Avery Helm is a moderator. And Dean Vandewall is one of our other moderators. And Dean, I think, will uh, is going to ban Isla for that thing that she, she just said in chat. Uh, regardless, if you want to volunteer for Pachak Tonight Winnipeg, please consider doing so. It's the same email that you would use to volunteer or to speak at Pachak Tonight. Uh, you can email us at Pachak Tonight Winnipeg at gmail.com. Um, you can volunteer for anything. Basically, this, this whole thing is an effort in finding speakers and, and convincing them to speak. Uh, so if, if you uh, know people and, and are well connected, consider joining us. Uh, Today is May 27, 2021, and this is, it's been a while since we've done this, but we do share Pachakcha nights with other cities. Uh, tonight, specifically on Thursday, May 27, 2021, we shared the date with uh, Pachakchas in Sydney, in Australia, of course, Harare in Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, excuse me, and Bratislava in Slovakia. We're the last one to come to be up for this event. Uh, so thank you to those who uh, presented in those Pachak tonight. Uh, am I on mute? No, there we go. <laughs> uh, 
I was just, you know, the, the, the glories and, and, and the, uh, I love being virtual. Anyway, yeah, so Sydney Harare in Bratislava. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, well, this is the last Pachak tonight of today, of today's date. So yeah, thank you. Uh, right, so if you like what we do here at Pachak tonight and want to know more in future, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at PKN underscore Winnipeg. You can also follow us on Facebook at Facebook slash Facebook.com slash Pachakcha Winnipeg. No night in that one. I didn't set that up, so don't blame me for that. Or you can just, you know, follow us on YouTube here. We do have a few clips of past talks on here. We might upload more in the future, so uh, keep track of that. And if you want to see our official uh, page on the website, you can go to pachakcha.com slash city slash Winnipeg. Our hashtag for tonight, if you are tweeting, Instagramming, Facebooking, all of that is hashtag PKNWPG43. And with that, it is on with the show. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar, oh, have you been to Harare, Isla? Amazing. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with the format of Pachak tonight, here is what's going to happen. Each of our seven presenters have been given uh, 20 slides in total to talk about whatever they want, really. But any, uh, but each slide uh, is only up on the screen for 20 seconds each. So in total, each speaker has six minutes and 40 seconds to talk about what they want. In the middle of uh, the lineup, there are seven speakers tonight. So after the third speaker, there is going to be an intermission. And that intermission will last for about five to 10 minutes, and then we'll go on to the second half. If you're curious about the order, uh, here is uh, the, or the order of the speakers that we have tonight. Oliver is going first, with Shantae going second, Carl is going third, uh, Kyla is fourth after the intermission, I should say, first after the intermission, uh, but is fourth total in the lineup. Then we have Michael going fifth, Rail going sixth, and Sherry going seventh. And that's that for the intro, I think. Uh, right. So are you guys ready? I think we got, we're ready for our first speaker. Finally, it's been so long. OK, here we go. Intro time. Oliver Shard is a sculptor based in Winnipeg, Manitoba. After several years spent living in the UK, Denmark, and Canada, he stu studied sculpture at Emily Carr University, Vancouver, where he developed an interest in wax as a medium. This fascination led to a tour of the wax anatomical collections of Europe, specifically, oh, excuse me, especially those of La Specula and the Josephinum. Josephin, fin, oof, I definitely checked this with Oliver a while ago. It's Josephinum, excuse me, after which he was inspired to appropriate their obsolete yet masterful techniques in his own work. He has since been engaged in independent study, experimenting with various media such as concrete and plaster, and concepts exploring distortion, movement, and translucency. He has shown his work in multiple galleries and shows in Manitoba and Saskatchewan. Please welcome to the virtual Pachak Tonight stage, Oliver Chard. Oliver, come out here and say hello. Oliver, are you there? Yeah, can you see Okay. Me? Yes, I can see. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Are you ready to go? Are you ready to start? Be our first speaker of our year-long hiatus of Pachakcha? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, tell me whenever you're ready, and I'll start the slide for you. Okay, ready. When I got out of school, I started working primarily with wax as a sculpting medium. I like the translucent quality as a way of representing human flesh. I was inspired in large part by the wax anatomical models of the past, which we used to teach anatomy to medical students when cadavers were unavailable. I was also inspired by the hyper-realists like Ram Uick and Patricia Piccinini. The lifelike quality of the wax brought the sculpture into our world and gave me the freedom to push the boundaries of what the viewer might accept. I wanted to create something so lifelike that the viewer would not even notice the medium and see into the sculpture. I wasn't going for hyper-realism as much as hyper-surrealism. I stopped working with wax in part because of how time-consuming it is to work with, but also because I changed my views on material authenticity, which have been evolving ever since. I was surprised to break free of wax as I had worked with it almost obsessively for a couple of years 
and at one point thought it would be the primary tool of my practice for the rest of my life. When I created the series, which this sculpture is a part of with my collaborator, the artist Mackenzie Federick, I fell in love with concrete. Concrete felt like the polar opposite of wax. It is hard, durable, and opaque. But more importantly, concrete looks exactly like what it is, with no pretense. I've continued to work with concrete, but have also experimented with other casting materials, such as metallic dust mixed with plaster and oxidizing it. I spent a lot of time studying the human face to understand what makes it what it is. I'm not to accomplish that, but I think it exists more in the viewer than in the subject. I wanted to make faces from scratch, which I did by gaining an understanding of facial proportions and by blending other people's features together. When I tried to work with no reference, the face I was making would start to mirror my own. Then I started making portraits like this one, which is a portrait of Ellen and the Greek goddess Athena. I don't consider this to be a blend of references as they are essentially the same. I really enjoy sculpting a portrait. It is a unique way of getting to know someone as is taking a long car ride together or getting drunk. It's also nice to be able to study someone with an intensity that would typically be socially unacceptable. Looking at a person and then replicating their face in clay made me feel like a real sculptor. But I wanted to explore other ways of making a portrait while simultaneously exploring new ways of casting concrete, like in this series of portraits with Sarah. I started with a traditional bust and then used an experimental casting method, which allowed me to have my cake and eat it too. I started working with relief because I was getting frustrated with the limitations of working in the round. Relief allowed me to make images I could not make before. I was very intimidated by the thought of working in relief because a professor once showed me the queen's head on a coin and told me that it looked like Elizabeth because despite being so shallow, it had her proportions. And I wasn't sure how to get my head around that. Once I gave it a try though, I found it was really very simple in practice. One advantage of sculpting this way was that I could start to tell a story in a similar way to how some people do with two-dimensional work while still sculpting. Someone once told me that my paintings look like preliminary works for sculptures. I thought that to be true and that was when I decided to be a sculptor. Working in relief felt a bit like going in full circle from that, but I wasn't tempted to pick up a brush. It was also very nice to make a small figure without it looking miniature and not having to deal with the structural limitations of working in the round. Despite all my complaints about working the round, my favorite things to sculpt are distorted and disproportionate human figures. Distorting the human body has been a motif in my practice for as long as I can remember. My earliest memories of drawings I made depicted people with arms coming out of their heads. Though this was more a matter of confusion than creativity, I think the idea is worth revisiting.
The final images here show some preliminary works I've made for a project, which has been on my mind for several years, but I'm not sure how to make it. I would like to show a static intensity while also hinting at movement. Excellent. Thank you so much, Oliver. Please give your warmest applause if you can. Well, I, we won't be able to hear it, but applause in your room, wherever you are in chat. Thank you so much. If you would like to know more about Oliver and his work, you can follow him on Instagram at oliverchart.art. Uh, and you can follow and uh, visit his website to see more of his stuff at oliverchart.com. Thank you so much, Oliver. I appreciate that. I think everyone in chat is, is Oh yes, let's let's see. Let's read what people are saying in chat. They're saying uh, Aiden is saying I'm always in awe of Ollie's work. Ma uh, Maureen Wilson says there is a beauty and imperfection. We have five claps, clapping emojis from Stephanie Robinson, and people are saying, "Oh, so cool! That's neat." So people are in love with your work, Oliver. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, thank you, Justin. Thank you. All right. So that was our first presenter, Oliver. Thank you so much for being here. I already said that. I don't know why I'm saying it again. <laughs> but uh, up next, we're, we're going straight through to the second speaker. Uh, our next speaker is Shantae miller Duick. Shantae miller Duick is a hairstylist from Winnipeg who specializes in curly and textured hair. Shantae loves anything that involves working with her hands and being creative. Whether it be hair, painting, collage, or a puzzle, she enjoys the art of bringing something beautiful to completion and sparking joy in others. Shantae is focused on learning more about her craft and making people with textured hair feel seen and beautiful in an industry that often overlooks or silences them. Please welcome to Pachak Tonight Winnipeg, Volume 43, Shantae Miller Duick. Shantae, get over Hi. here. Where are you? Hi. I'm I, here. Oh, there you are. Hi. How are you? Hi. I'm good. How are you? I'm well. I, Shantae, by the way, has been a friend of Pachakcha. They have they haven't spoken at Pachakcha before, but they've always been like, oh, I'm just here to watch. And I was like, you know what? Let's give Shantae a shot. And uh, <laughs> I'm excited to hear what you have to say. People in chat are saying hello. Uh, so hi. <laughs> are you ready to go? I am totally ready. Okay, I'm going to set it off for you in a few seconds. When you see your first slide, that's what your cue to go. All right, okay. see you in a bit. Thanks. So this is a photo of me about age seven. Um, since I was young, I really enjoyed making art, uh, but I never thought my art was good enough to share with the world. So I always kept it to myself. I was always really fond of looking at other people's art though, whether it be like on the internet or in books. Um, and over the years, I kind of started to make friends online of people that I could share my art with. This is a painting I did when I was 15 years old. Um, it's inspired by an album cover from an artist in Southern California that I was really fond of. And it was one of the first things I shared. I shared it with a bunch of his fans on Twitter and everyone loved it. And he even responded and told me how much he loved it. Um, and it was awesome. But I never really considered doing hair as a career. Um, I always struggled with my own hair growing up. I had I have these weird waves and curls that I didn't really know what to do with. And uh, for a long time, I actually really thought hair was like a really superficial and shallow profession and that it kind of exploited people's insecurities. Um, but I just didn't know how to express myself. I didn't really want people to know me or to see me. And I didn't really want to know myself. I kind of just wanted to exist until I didn't. And I just wanted to find a way to put everything I was feeling and put it in a box, but it often ended up on paper or in words and sometimes in outbursts of emotion that I just could not explain. <laughs> um, I was very much a drama queen in high school. I was actually tagged in this photo on Facebook by some classmates. And I'm not really sure if it was supposed to be a joke or like a bullying thing, but I just remember feeling really exposed and really vulnerable. Um, and I realized that people saw that I was me that I was not okay and that I had a lot going on. This is something that I don't like sharing <laughs> at all, but I'm going to. It's a screen cap from a YouTube video of me at 17. Um, I'm presenting a spoken word poem here. 
um, this artist from Winnipeg, Mirio, he came to my class and taught us about spoken word. And I wrote the most honest piece that I've ever written in my whole life. And he asked me to present it and I did, and it was thrilling. And ever since then, I kind of started sharing my art. Um, I started sharing the things that I was excited about. This is a painting that I just did on my own time that I was really happy with. Um, but I started to see that with intentionality, I could actually make myself happy and make others happy. And I started collaborating on things. This is a picture from an art project from that artist from California I mentioned earlier. And I just realized that if people have talents that they should share them. So I can't pinpoint the exact moment, but one day I kind of just woke up and decided to go to hair school. <laughs> um, I realized that I really like people. I really like hair. I really like being creative. I really like trades. I was really bad at school. I didn't like sitting down. I didn't like being alone. I didn't like being bored. And I was like, oh my gosh, I should just go to hair school. <laughs> um, this is Alice. Alice is someone who her granddaughter actually reached out to me through Kijiji because I realized that I should probably use the practical skills and tools of doing hair to help other people and not just myself. So her granddaughter reached out to me through Kijiji and was like, hey, my grandma can't come to the salon. Will you come to our house and do her hair? And I was like, absolutely. And again, just a way that I could use my art to make other people feel good. Um, this is a photo from a school project that we did with a couple other students and I loved it. It was so much fun. It was one of my first times getting to work with textured hair. And I realized that that was going to be a huge part of my career. Um, but the more I grew and the more I learned, I just realized that there was things that I had to expand on, things I had to learn. I started reaching out to the creative people in my life and learned a bit of photo editing, a little of how to take a photo, um, just how to see the world through different eyes, how to experience art in a different way, how to see art in literally everything. And that's kind of where I'm at now is I'm just looking for art everywhere. And if there isn't art there, then I have the opportunity to make it and to share it. That's the biggest thing for me is like, <laughs> if I want to decorate a silly cake that I'm going to share that cake and uh, enjoy it myself. But there's just so much beauty in creating things. And that's really what I want to share with the world. Um, I thought I spent a lot of time thinking that I had just had nothing to contribute and I do. And if you are a person who thinks that you don't have anything to contribute to the world, then you're totally wrong. Um, this is another photo that I'm really proud of. It was something I just did on my own time. I grabbed my friends and I was like, Hey, will you model for me? I did her hair. I took the photo and we just went on a walk and had a good time. And it was perfect. And as I grew in my career as, and as I was at school, I realized that there was a huge lack of um, curly hair and textured hair knowledge and teaching. And I kept asking, when are we gonna get to the curly hair? When are we gonna learn about this? And I realized that they don't teach it. And so now I'm very fortunate that I get to work in one of Winnipeg's only curly hair salons. And every day I get to make these beautiful people who've had this burden on their head feel seen and feel understood and um, I get to teach them how to manage their hair I get we get to swap stories and every day is such a beautiful day I miss working so much right now um, but there's so many things I get to do so many things I get to experiment with um, and it's a really just a huge collaboration process because people don't just come into the salon and get me to do their hair like I get them to bend over in weird positions and I'm like okay I'm gonna get you to hold the brush this really weird way and we just learn together but what I'm trying to get at is that I realized that I have a gift and that we all have gifts and that we should share those gifts we should share those talents and continue to make art together make each other happy with what makes us happy Seeing a person leave my chair is a rush that I can't explain. Like the joy when they feel beautiful is amazing. And I love that. And so I'm just going to keep doing my thing and making people feel beautiful and do it until I can't do it anymore. Yeah. 
Yes, thank you, Shante. Oh, okay. Let me just go through the chat right now and say uh, what people are thinking. Uh, I have Randy Governo saying, "Oh, I don't know if you know this. What what this is? It's Nereo. I don't know if that's relevant to you, but there's that. Uh, despite that, he does say outstanding work, Shante. So." Congratulations to that. Such talent with hair, says Olivia Madeline. Maureen Wilson says, artistic expression knows no boundaries. And that is very true. Thank you for that, Maureen. Uh, Olivia Madeline says, so much vision and creativity and passion in what you do. Oh, Astrid is here. Astrid Klein, who is the other half of Klein Dice and Architecture. Uh, by the way, they are both coming in from Tokyo. I don't know if I mentioned that. So they are watching from Tokyo. So it's probably quite a bit early, quite a bit late. I'm not sure uh, over there. Uh, so. Thank you again. Thank you, Ash, for being here. Um, oh, and so is Brian. Brian from, from Pachakcha in Tokyo. So hello. Uh, Wendy Singleton says, beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Curly Hair Rules says, Brian. Scott Peterson. Uh, everyone's applauding. Heidi says, beautifully said. Very heartfelt and honest says, Rob. Everyone loves it. Thank you so much, Shante. Appreciate that. Thank if you. you Oh, thank you, girl. Uh, if you want to uh, know more about and, and get to know uh, Shantae on social media, they have Instagram. Uh, you can go to at Slicey Fingers, that's S-L-I-C-E-Y Fingers uh, on Instagram. Get to know them there. See their beautiful hair wear. I've, I've seen it. It's, it's, an, it's very aesthetic. I quite like it. It's very nice. So, uh, and also, Please support your hairstylist as after uh, the pandemic restrictions are over in Winnipeg uh, because they, they're, pretty, they're hurting pretty bad right now. So, uh, yes, yeah. we are. Consi please consider going to Shantae if you have curly hair, especially. So, thank you, Shantae, for that. Okay. Uh, people, uh, there you go. If you want to get to know Shantae more and, and what they do, go to their Instagram. Uh, okay. Thanks, Shantae. We're going to move on now to our third speaker, which is the last speaker before intermission. And that, it went really quickly, I know. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, that's how it is sometimes. Pachakta is a fast format um, and it just makes sense. <laughs> Watch me flounder as I try to say words. Okay, that's also the other appeal of Pachakta Night Winnipeg. I try and then I fail miserably and that's okay. Uh, we're all learning. Uh, Dean says, Shantae, you slay. I'll see myself out. Oh girl, I say that to Shantae all the time when I used to see her. Uh, anyway, moving on, let's move on now to our third speaker, Carl Shura. As a graphic designer of 10 years, Carl Shura's experience includes visual identity and brand management, marketing communications, environmental graphics, exhibition spaces, and type design. Since 2016, he has been at ERA Architects, a heritage architecture and planning firm in Toronto, where his work includes signage strategy. Uh, creative interpretation plans and exhibition design and the recreation of historic signage and lettering in the built environment. Carl is a graduate of the graphic design school at Red River College and of the Type Lab res Oof. Excuse me, uh, the head of the Type Lab residency at SVA in New York City. He has he is a regular mentor through RGD, uh, which is I think the Registered Graphic Designers, which is a Canadian association. I think, oh, is it America? We'll, we'll figure that when Carl gets here. Uh, he is a regular mentor through RGD for recent and soon to be graduates and is an occasional guest lecturer in Toronto. In summer of 2021, Carl is looking forward to completing the post-grad program in type design at the very infamous, or not infamous, the, the, the famed, well, I think it's famous, Cooper Union. Please welcome to the virtual stage after I flatter that intro, Carl Shura. Carl, get out here. Where are you at? Hi, Justin. Hi. <laughs> the, just that deadpan, hey. <laughs> I know, I did so I poorly on that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I butchered that completely. I'm so, I feel so bad. Uh, by the way, Carl is calling us today from Toronto specifically. So he is an hour ahead. Uh, the, one of the good things about being in a virtual event is that we can call our friends who've moved away to other places. Uh, and I mean, it clearly, it looks like that, that, uh, that is working out for you very well as you're in Cooper Union doing type design or learning or finishing up your postgrad. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> everyone is saying hi, by the way. Thanks. Hello, everyone. There you go. People are really excited for you. Rosa says, yay, Carl. Stephanie Robinson says, woo. <laughs> Natalie K says, woo. They're excited. I should probably get going because I've talked too much. Are you ready to go, Carl? 
I think I'm ready. Yeah, you can hear me. All right. I can hear you very well. Thank you. Well, let's do. Okay, let's do it. Uh, you, when you see your first slide, that's your cue to go. So good luck. I'll see you at the end of your slides. Perfect. So I've titled this type design an annotated review of core principles and theory subtitle, the never ending education of practice. And the disclaimer is, I'm sorry that this sounds really boring, but essentially I'm gonna go through some key concepts and share how my understandings evolved over time through practice. What is a type designer? I think that they are machines that turn coffee into letter forms. Uh, simply a type designer designs type which become fonts. Fonts are prefabricated ways to write, made as a harmonious system with characters that look intentional altogether. My type education started in earnest when the GDC created the Carl Dare typography workshops. In 2014 with Rod McDonald, and then in 2016 with Kevin King, I was exposed to a fuller view of typography and then to type design. In 2019, as mentioned, I was invited to SVA's summer type residency in New York with Dan Radigan, Ksenia Samarskaya, and Tobias Fred Jones. And next week I'm starting the condensed program postgrad in type design at Cooper Union. So I've been reviewing my learning and I'm going to share these three core concepts, shapes, stroke, and spacing. Uh, Type designers typically talk of the DNA of a typeface, the uh, elemental components, straight, curved, angled, the shape, the line, the contour, and the connections. These all expose its formal structure. Uh, my first real lettering related project was in 2017 as part of the conservation of the historic Toronto Stock Exchange building in Toronto. Its long lost pinned letter sign was to be reinstated in all its art deco glory. There were virtually no existing photography that showed the 1937 sign clearly though, so we were left with a weathered shadow on the stone and the existing address numbers. Two, three, four actually hold all the DNA required to recreate the letter set accurately. With these precise measurements for width, length and angles, the letters were redrawn quickly with the information available. A further understanding of these elemental components of line and shape is to understand that there is a continuum from handwriting to type. The truth is that these elemental pieces of letters are not simply shapes assembled, but these straights, curves, angles, and connections were born of handwriting, and their logic is logic of the hand. This also bears out a distinction between informal adaptive and formalized structured we see also in this continuum that we move from strokes to shapes, a distinction here between what is written and what is drawn. The type designer is drawing shapes, but always with a mind on the logic of the hand. Inevitably, if we're talking about the hand, we're talking about the stroke. My first lesson in type design came from Kevin King, always maintain the stroke. Here we see three strokes in a practical construction, they remain separate rather than combining them all as one solid shape and having a tougher time to modify them individually. Further, we can be dealing with just two types of strokes, according to Herod Nurdzai. There's a running stroke where the pen never leaves the page, or the interrupted stroke where the separate marks are made to construct a letter. More than that, Nurdzai differentiates two concepts of stroke construction through the tool. The broad nib pen held at a constant orientation angle called translation or the flexible fine point pen where pressure on the page creates the stroke contrast called expansion. Nordze applies these binary distinctions as the ideal or objective way to classify every font rather than through a historical or subjective aesthetic classification system. This understanding based entirely on the hand and stroke makes classification simpler and it makes the logic of our letter forms easier to understand we return to these elemental DNA of line, shape, and connecting points, but with a new view and clarity of what we're seeing and why. All letters are a combination of dark and light space, filled or empty. Spacing has less to do with the dark strokes than with the relationship of the internal space and the space outside each letter, which we call side bearings. Roughly speaking, the internal space will equal the outer space as though the two volumes are filled 
with portions of sand. This concept explains why heavier weights fonts have tighter spacing. It's always a balancing act between the light and dark forms of any letter, but never just a letter in isolation. Isolated letters are not type design, but rather the whole system that works together. When it comes to spacing an entire font, we set a relative standard for all letter spacing with what we call control characters. Capital O and H and lowercase n and O provide the basic spacing info for all our straight-sided and curved forms and combinations thereof. Character spacing strings lay out all the characters as a font as you draw them so that each letter's side bearings can be set to produce a consistent color and rhythm with your control characters as the standard. Here's where I mentioned that this is a sheet marked up by Tobias Frere Jones. No big deal. Uh, note that the character spacing is not the same as kerning, which is specific letter pairs spaced especially together. Our goal is to apply spacing so well to this font that minimal kerning will be required for only the most problematic pairs, letters like L, T, and A, and V. I'm gonna close, I think, with a little philosophy. Maybe in the 20th century, letters were things, and in the 21st, maybe they are immaterial. Chris Sorsby of ClemType is one of the most important and influential type designers working today, and I really appreciate the deep thinking he applies in developing his type theory and practice. Similar to understanding the hand in Nordze's practice, Sorsby asks what it might mean to work with the grain, as it were, in a digital workspace, when a Bezier curve's innate nature is exposed as the tool rather than a pen as the starting point. But our end goal remains the same, to design type in a harmonious system, one of shape, stroke, and space. Yes, thank you, Carl. Oh, just a shrug, no, a casual shrug for the ending of that. Uh, people are talking in chat as usual. Uh, Natalie Kilnick says, let's go. I think that was in, in response to you being up next. I think they're really excited for you. Uh, Christina Dean says fonts are so important though. Obviously, yes, they are. All, as a graphic designer, all yes, I yeah, fonts are very important. Uh, Oliver says, Carl, this is fantastic. Uh, so Oliver Oike, emer uh, speaker, or excuse me, organizer emeritus giving uh, kudos to you there. Uh, Christina Dean says balance and then did the okay symbol. Uh, Dean says, Carl got super type nerdy in Toronto. I don't see a lie. Uh, I don't spot a lie. Aiden says, these talks are making me miss school. Stephanie Robinson says, no big deal. I think after you said the that no big deal. <laughs> it's fun. Uh, Isla, I'll last one for, for a bit. Isla says, I think I'm going to leave home to become a type designer, which is what you did. So, I mean, there you go. Thank you, Carl, so much for that. I miss you very much. Uh, Carl has, is on social media on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, no, that's not Facebook. That's supposed to be Twitter. That's my bad. He's on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, you can visit him by going to at Carl Shura, C-A-R-L-S-H-U-R-A. -R and that's Carl. Thank you, Carl, so much for being here. Uh, and we'll see you again soon at the end of this thing. Uh, yeah. Oh, Ian says, nice job. Ian! Oh, by the way, Ian Bawa, uh, former speaker, maybe a speaker in the near future, I don't know, uh, is currently uh, in puppy heaven, and I love it. Uh, and also, I think he, what was it, Ian? You got nominated for uh, uh, some festival? I forget what it was. Um, it's it's really, it's really important, though, I, I think. I really should remember this. I, I mean, I didn't expect you to be here, so, so, so I'm, I'm messing it up. So sorry about that. But yes, please go also check Ian Bawa when you when you have a chance. Uh, it's one of our more, more important up and coming filmmakers here in Winnipeg. But anyway, up next, of course, as I promised, is the intermission. Uh, we're going to be back in about 10 minutes. Please uh, get a glass of water, a glass of wine, if that's more of your thing. Make another drink. Uh, keep walking and talking. As one of you posted on social media, I am uh, keep seeing if you guys are posting on social media and reposting all those stories on Instagram uh, and retweeting on Twitter and so on and so forth. So uh, please consider doing that. Uh, yes, Ian. Excellent. Uh, so yeah, we'll be back in about five minutes. It's currently 8.44. We'll be back exactly at 8.50 for the second half of Pachak tonight. We'll see you in a moment.
Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a few more minutes to return. It is currently 8.51. We're a little bit late by a minute, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah. So let's let's give you guys a few minutes. But uh, how are you guys doing so far? Everything going well? Yeah. It's been a great evening so far, a very inspiring talks. Um, I do I do miss this feeling. That's So it's great that we're having a, a return to talk tonight, Winnipeg. Um, it has been a while. So uh, again, if you are just uh, returning or you ju you, you're just catching up to the stream today, uh, first of all, hello, welcome. Uh, if you are watching us from any of the other websites other than YouTube, say the Patak Tonight Winnipeg or Patak Tonight website, the front page specifically, uh, hello to you guys, especially if you're watching from outside of the city, uh, outside of the country of Canada, where we're from. Uh, so hello to you guys. Uh, if you are in Winnipeg or were a person who lived in Winnipeg before and you were wanting to do the next virtual one, if we are doing a virtual one, maybe try getting in touch with us. We are interested in getting more speakers. Uh, of course, uh, let me just get to that email address if you want to get, oh, that's volunteering. You can volunteer too if you want, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, if you want to speak at Patak Tonight in Winnipeg and do the same thing that our speakers are doing right now, uh, you can go to patoktonightwinnipeg at gmail.com or follow us on our social media uh, accounts uh, at pkn underscore Winnipeg on Instagram and Twitter on Facebook, Pachacha, Winnipeg, and on, well, you can't message us on YouTube because it'd be probably, <laughs> I don't know how the messaging system works on YouTube, but you can message us on the other uh, Instagram, uh, on their social media feeds if you're interested in presenting uh, at one of the next events for Pachacha tonight. Uh, oh, thank you guys. Thank you. Oh, thank you guys so much for the, the kind words over there. Um, but yes, uh, I think you guys should be good to go for the next speaker, I think. So let, let's get on. Uh, with the show again. Hopefully you are well hydrated as everyone should be, uh, especially now that it's getting warmer out. Uh, so please stay hydrated. Um, or if or if you're not hydrated, hydrated, uh, not too, too inebriated, I guess. I'm not judging, honestly. Uh, Brian Scott Peterson, who is part of the Pachakcha team in Tokyo, says Brian is one quarter Canadian and his roots are in Winnipeg. Yeah, actually, I should mention that. I don't think I've told this yet, but I did meet the team in Tokyo uh, and they were really nice. Like Brian, Brian's really nice. We took a photo together, I think. Um, presenting is exhilarating. I practically blacked out, says Natalie. <laughs> I've done it twice myself, so I know the feeling, so I understand that. Uh, but yes, so thank you, Brian, by the way. Brian, of course, representing Winnipeg from Tokyo. So that's very... I hate using the word awesome because I think it's kind of chuggy, but like, it's great. It's a great, it's, it's great that he's here. Uh, okay. Let's get going up next is Kyla lamb. Now, a lot of you are here for Kyla as your graduates of the red river graphic design program. Uh, uh, Kyla, <laughs> sorry, I just saw something in chat that told me not to be too thirsty. I'm not too thirsty. We are very well hydrated. Thank you. Okay. Anyway, Kyla lamb. Kyla Lam is a 2020 grad of the graphic design program at Red River College and a recent grad of communication design. She has a passion for human-centered design and designing for social good. Her work has centered around creating multifaceted visual identities, accessible and inclusive projects with a sprinkle of modern web design. Kyla is an advocate for disability rights and is in the process of launching a podcast on the topic called Roll With It. Please welcome again to the, again, please welcome to the Pachak Tonight Winnipeg Volume 43's virtual stage, Kyla Lamb. Kyla, where are you at? Kyla? Hi. Oh, there you are. <laughs> I was so extra there. Okay, it was all... accurate though. I did oh. put my camera on a little too early to call myself out. <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. Uh, people are saying, yay, go, Ky uh, go Kyla. Alyssa Rewuki says, woo, go Kayla, or Kyla, excuse me. Tania Brown says, yay. Stephanie Robinson is applauding. People are excited <laughs> for you. I'm excited for you. Brian is laughing because I used the word chuggy. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> We're learning as a 30 year old what to do. Anyway, are you ready, Kyla? I think so, yeah. You got a girl, don't you worry. Okay, once you see the next slide, uh, that's your cue to go. Good luck and I'll see you at the end of it. All right. 
Hi, my name is Kyla. Some of you may know me, but I'm sure most of you guys don't. Um, I'm a recent grad of communication design and graphic design at Red River. Now, a pachapacha, look at me go. As creatives, we have a responsibility to shape the world around us, to tell authentic stories, and share experiences of all people. I grew up in Selkirk, it's a small town, about 10,000 people. It was even smaller back in the day. I grew up, no, nope. <laughs> I remember when I got glasses, grade four, I was distraught to go to school the next day. I went from being the kid who couldn't play on the play structure to the kid with glasses who couldn't play on the play structure. <clears throat> Lizzie McGuire didn't have to wear glasses, so why do I have to? At the time, there was no representation surrounding disability, and the representation of people that wore glasses were chalked up to being nerds. At least I looked the part. Fast forward to my last year of design school. I started to find a community online, there we go, <laughs> of other disabled 20-somethings that were going through similar things as me. Interacting with this community made me feel less alone, and I started thinking about how I've been missing out on this feeling of community and acceptance for a majority of my life. For my thesis project, I took this feeling and ran with it. The catalyst <clears throat> was the conversations my partner and I were having constantly about, about the ableism that we dealt with on a daily basis. We decided to create a podcast called Roll With It, which surrounds disability, accessibility, and everything in between, and it's set to go live this summer. Yes, some of the things we deal with are obvious, like the lack of accessible businesses, even in Winnipeg, and bad parking situations. But what most don't consider are the more hurtful things like gaslighting, derogatory and outdated language, but sticks and stones, right? Outright exclusion still happens. We wanted to do this project the right way. For months, we researched how to use design to make every aspect of this podcast accessible. Ways that maybe I never thought of before. Understanding how to write alt tags in the most effective way, making sure there's a transcript for each episode, and most importantly, understanding our privilege while working on this project. Privilege is something to be mindful of. I, like most people, used to think accessibility was ramps, automatic doors, and closed captions. But disability doesn't look one way, and it's our job to think of ways to include as many people as possible. Inclusion is one thing, but respect is a whole other thing. Do you research and have those conversations? Because how I prefer she, her pronouns, I also prefer identity first language, but not all disabled people are like me. Ableism, ableism is at times intentional, but it could also be a lack of understanding. Either way, it is not okay. And the solution isn't one size fits all. As creatives, we need to do our research on any topic to do meaningful work. And accessibility is no different. Consider all the people that are hearing impaired. If every form of audio or video was available in transcripts or closed captions, that would be growing the potential audience by 3 million people just in Canada alone. Why would you not include them? But here's the real kicker. If if everyone <laughs> recognized that they can become disabled at any point in their life, there would be a lot less hesitancy when it comes to accessibility needs of any form. In the world, one billion people have some type of disability and that number grows each year. Historically, disability is not represented enough. And when it is represented, it is often inaccurate not all representation is good representation, and token, tokenism is not diversity. Having diverse and accurate representation benefits everyone. Most representation that does exist are wheelchair users. Although they are very important to the community, this narrative is harmful because it sets society up to assume what disability looks like. Because I don't fit that narrative, this is why I and others often get harassed when we park in accessible parking stalls. Notice how I said accessible instead of handicap? This is an example of harmful language. Another word that is easy to change is crazy or insane. Try replacing it with wild. Awareness and research is key and words are a great place to start because none of the examples on screen right now are okay. 
Another thing we could do is add alt tags to our social media. Integrating alt tags into Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook allows screen readers to, to provide context to the images. Um, and on screen just kind of shows you how you can do that on Instagram, which is really cool. Um, disability, disabilities and individual situations are always evolving. And what I needed in grade four is definitely not what I need now. Times change and it's our responsibility to keep up. Understanding your audience and what they need is crucial. Uh, I just wanna shout out the park for making your space more inclusive. I'm super excited for the next Pachakcha there. As designers, we are in a powerful position to make the world more inclusive and accessible. Inclusivity is a scam if it excludes disabled people. Making a shift in our process to consider others and their needs doesn't have to be a radical overhaul. Start small, do your research and ask questions. A few things I want you to take away from this is one, don't make accessibility an afterthought. Number two, listen to the people in the community. And three, I still enjoy Lizzie McGuire because how could you not? All jokes aside, inclusion and accessibility are important to our world and these changes start with us. Having the opportunity that I have now to create representation and inclusion and in sharing this with the design community helps others find what I found a lot sooner, people like them. Intersectionality is real. And as I said before, inclusivity is a scam if it excludes disabled people. Thanks for listening. Yes, thank you, Kyla. I just wanted to add something to that. Um, sure. I remember that there's a wise woman who once said, and I quote, if you believe we've got a picture perfect plan, we've got you fooled, because we only do the best we can. You know what I mean, Kyla? Yeah, I definitely know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm so dumb. <laughs> no, it's true, though, because like, if you think it's perfect, you definitely miss something. So exactly. That's where I love talking Lizzie to McGuire. people. Yeah. That's where talking to people comes in. But yeah, Lizzie McGuire is where it's at. Lizzie McGuire is like, <laughs> honestly, oh God, I'm such a millennial. I love her. She's the best. I'm so sad that they, okay, no, we're not going to go into pop culture talk. We, we, yeah, have, we, have a show to do. we have a show to do, but also thank you for showing up uh, Park Theater. They did do some really good renovations and we're also really excited to be back oh, there. It's um, so excited. The people in the chat are going off, sis. They are saying Hillary Duff, woo. Uh, very good to know, sis. Kidu Kyo, who has been very um, mysterious as to their real identity. Uh, Robin Caxpers, he says, and Camel Case, your hashtag, she said, very good. Uh, tip there. Thank you, Kyla. Absolutely agree, says Wendy Singleton. Uh, Isla says, Daniel! I don't know what that's about. Uh, Oliver says, yeah, there's lots of claps. Uh, and so if you are interested in what Kyla has brought to Pachakcha and want to know more about their work uh, and their podcast that is coming up, I think, when is, when is your, has it been released already? It has not been released. We do have an Instagram um, roll with it podcast. If there you we want, go. Go check that out. But yeah, go check. End of out. summer ish. Yeah. Very loose time. <laughs> Can't wait. Please subscribe to the podcast if you can. You can also go to Kyla J dot design if you want uh, more information on their graphic design work. And uh, you can also go to the website Kyla J design dot com for all of that. I think the information for roll with it will be adjacent at least to that. It'll be somewhere. Uh, at least somewhere. <laughs> Thank you, Kyla, so much. We will see you at the end of the show. Good job. Thank you. All right. Excellent. We are now, oh, look at all these people being so supportive. That's so nice to see. Uh, right. Let's uh, now move on to our fifth speaker of the evening. We only have, uh, we only have three left to go. Uh, so our next speaker is Michael Wilson. Michael Wilson is a United Church of Canada minister who has been at Charleswood since 1994. He has had experiences in global justice, indigenous relations, and ecumenism work, as well as in theological education as a former adjunct professor at the University of Winnipeg. He has a science degree from the University of Manitoba, a master's from University of Toronto, and a doctorate from Chicago Theological Seminary. He has written for sub ooh, several, all these complicated words, and I miss up on several. He, sorry, he has written for several publications, including recent articles for the Winnipeg Free Press. His first book, A Guided Tour of the Bible, was on the McNally Robinson bestseller list for 2014. In 2012, Michael was a recipient of the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal for Community Service. Please welcome to the virtual Pachak Tonight Winnipeg stage, 
Dr. Michael Wilson. Michael, are you there? Here I am. Hi, how are you? I'm great, Justin. How are you? I'm loving I'm, tonight. Oh, good. I was about to ask you how you felt about the evening, but you answered my question for me. I'm doing super well. Thank you for asking. <laughs> well, I'm feeling especially old and not nearly as creative as everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely fine. I think everyone, I think I forgot to mention this at the beginning for the introduction, but uh, all acts of, of like making something is creative in some way and <laughs> making a pachakta is creative, I think. So you're, you're in good for company, sure. I'm sure. For sure. Awesome. Uh, are you ready to go? I am. Okay, excellent. When you see your first slide, that's your cue to go. So okay. I'll see you at the end of your 20 slides. Thanks. In the 1980s, I was a student at the University of Toronto. And in those days, the internet was called cable television. And the scandal of the day was about televangelists. It was the era of the lifestyles of the rich and famous and preachers were among them. I don't want to go into any details about the various falls from grace, but I will say about that time, a group of us went to a Bruce Coburn concert at, at Massey Hall. We all loved Bruce. He was Canadian. He was political. He was religious. He was so talented. And that night he said something. I'm getting tired of saying that I'm a Christian, but not that type of Christian. I've been thinking about that comment recently as a certain type of Christianity has grabbed many headlines. The churches who went to court to overturn public orders. And even though 99% of all religious organizations are doing their part to turn back the pandemic, attention gets drawn to a few who desire to be the exception. So if you're part of a religious community or not, if you're wondering what's going on, if you have to ask yourself, what is wrong with these people? In the spirit of Bruce Coburn tonight, I want to explain what it means to say I'm not that type of Christian. My intention here is to help you understand what might be going on in Christianity today. I'm not talking about the dynamics of other religious traditions. I'm speaking totally as a Canadian, as a liberal Protestant, as a clergy person, a member of a particular denomination. But here we go. It's 2021, so that may cause you to remember that Christianity is about 2,000 years old. If you have Eastern European roots in your family, you may know there was a split or a schism in the church about a thousand years ago, an Eastern church led from Constantinople, a Western church led from Rome. If you haven't heard of the term the Protestant Reformation, you probably have heard of the term Renaissance. These events were part of the modernization or transformation of the Western world, they took place about 500 years ago. I'm gonna leave the last 500 years as the paradox that it is. As the development of seafaring uh, and weaponry gave rise, colonial powers took their Catholic and Protestant religious understandings with them, always out of context and consequently, nearly universally destructive to indigenous people. But it was a mixed thing. Christianity in the last 500 years has spread literacy and disease, slavery and abolition. It's used to keep people silent, but it's also been used as a force for good. It has allowed some people to find their voice. It's a force for death, sometimes, and a force for life. But today, Christianity is holding what author Phyllis Tickle describes as a 500 year garage sale, getting rid of what it no longer needs and retaining that which can still be useful. In this great book, The Great Emergence, Tickle argues that Christianity undergoes a profound paradigm shift every 500 years. Remember I said the Protestant Reformation was 500 years ago and the great schism that split it east and west was 500 years before that. And 500 years before that, the Roman Empire collapsed. And 500 years from that was close to the year zero and where it all began. So let's look at the paradigm shift going on in Christianity today. One way to describe Christian traditions is on a theological spectrum, from far right to far left. And you may have some familiarity with this if you know the difference between a Baptist and an Anglican or a Quaker and a Catholic and so on and so forth. There's lots of discrepancies, so take each with a grain of salt. But another way to describe Christian churches is to create a continuum based on the way that they worship, a liturgical scale, from very scripted and traditional to free and spontaneous. 
you might think that these, these lines go parallel to one another, but they don't. They actually intersect each other in a way that creates a, a quadrant. So let's look at that. In one corner, you have the conservative traditional. Think of a Latin mass or a Ukrainian Orthodox funeral. In another quadrant, the liberal traditional quadrant, you may think of a robed choir in one of my United Church of Canada congregations. In the conservative evangelical uh, free worship, think of traditions like Pentecostal and Baptist and Alliance. And in the bottom right or fourth quadrant, liberal in theology yet free in worship, think of examples in the African-American church. I think it's easier to understand this by asking the question, what do these things sound like? These quadrants sound like a Gregorian chant, that's quad one, old hymns blended with global choruses, that's quad two, contemporary Christian radio, that's quad three, and spiritual texts in soul gospel or jazz styles, that's four. Every group floats around, but they don't leave their quadrant very often. Even progressive churches like mine aspires to be has a great difficulty changing the way that it worships. We, we resist change even as intellectually and spiritually we try to be more progressive. My church, the United Church in the last generation or so has sought to address homophobia, the legacy of our participation in residential schools and currently our historical blindness to systemic racism. But stubbornly, our worship life changes very slowly and we look and sound much as we always have. But here's the thing, the Bruce Coburn thing, it doesn't matter what quadrant you're in, you can be authentic in every quadrant, there's good and bad in every quadrant. The overriding question is, can you love neighbor with all the passion and zeal and, and, and enthusiasm that you say you love God or what Augustine refers to as the double rule of love? Christians need to ask themselves, is it more important to be known for what you stand for or what you stand apart from? What is wrong with all these people? We're in the midst of a 500-year garage sale. Please be patient while we try to figure out what to keep and what to throw away. Yes, thank you, Michael. That was very informative and inspiring. I really appreciate that. Excellent. Uh, if you'd like to see some of Michael's uh, I guess sermons is the word for that, that you can take a look uh, at the Charleswood United Church YouTube page at Charleswood United Church. You can also search them up on Facebook and uh, you can also visit the website, charleswoodunited.org. Uh, Christina in chat says, my family on both sides for generations back were extremely Catholic. Things have changed with the more recent generations though. And that's, yeah, that's great. I'm happy to see that certain sects of Christianity are becoming more open. Alice, a uh, friend of Patakta, says that was wonderful. Kidu Keo says very insightful. Amazing. Well, that was very, I, I quite enjoyed that. Uh, so thank you so much, Michael, for being here and, and educating us today on that. Thanks for the opportunity. People are being very kind. I appreciate it. Absolutely. We'll see you at the end of the show. Absolutely. Excellent. So let us now uh, move on to our penultimate speaker. We're almost done. That that was an evening that, I mean, all Patakta kind of, evenings pr go pretty fast, I think. Uh, but it's usually jam-packed with a lot of interesting information that you can take away uh, maybe one or two tidbits from, even more, maybe. Uh, oh, if there are people in chat. My, my latency is a little low here. So there are people are saying uh, very insightful talk, lots of claps. Thank you for your insights, says Natalie. Reverend showing his sermoning skills had my full attention, says Vanda Taves. Hey, that was awesome, says L. Smith. Excellent. I'm so glad to see that you guys are responding to that very inspiring talk. Uh, okay, moving on now to speaker number six of seven of the evening, Rail McGregor. Rail McGregor is a non-binary, two-spirit Métis comic artist and animator from Winnipeg, Manitoba. They're a recent graduate of Seneca Animation 2D program, graduating with honors and directing the short film Dracudate. They work primarily in writing LGBTQ2S plus imaginings of fantasy slash sci-fi stories in hopes of making the world a little brighter. Please welcome to the virtual Pachak tonight stage, Rael McGregor. Rael! Oh my God, that was so shrill. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Rael, are you there? Hi. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Hi, how are you? I'm, I'm great. How are you? 
I'm great. You know what? It's it's been a great evening so far. I think people are excited to say hello. Uh, Isla says Rael. Stephanie is giving claps in the chat. Darren Hirose, uh, our former icon, uh, cosplay medic says hello. He says woo Rael actually. Am Emily Fonti says Rael. Avery says Rael. They're excited for you. Um, and I'm excited for you. I'm so excited to see what you have come up with. Um, you, uh, just as a little tidbit of info, you are also calling from Toronto today, just like Carl. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yes, yes, amazing. And again, that's one of the good things about this uh, virtual event is that we can call our friends from far away who've, who've gone away and are doing great things like graduating with honors and making animated films like you and making fonts like Carl. So this is great. I'm so excited. Anyway. Are you ready to present uh, your slides? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. Thank you. OK, excellent. I will see you then at the end of your 20 slides. Good luck. Thanks. <clears throat> um, hi, hello. Uh, my name is Ram McGregor. Uh, anyway, um, I'm going to be... Are you ready to present? Oh. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Hold um, on. Sorry. I act, oh, let's do that again. I accidentally okay. <laughs> pressed uh, the sound on my uh, YouTube stream. Normally, I oh, would good. say keep going, but let's do that again. That is completely my fault. <laughs> sure, it's all good. Uh, hopefully, that didn't throw you off. Okay, ready? No, One more time. Uh, hi, hello. <laughs> my name is Real McGregor. Um, um, it's really nice to be here today. Um, and uh, I'm really excited to talk a little bit about building stories for comics and animation. Um, you know, uh, we all have a story um, and uh, we need more voices uh, telling stories. Um, so who am I? Uh, yeah, I'm Rael. <laughs> um, I grew up in Winnipeg um, and recently moved over to Toronto uh, to go to school at Seneca. Um, I just graduated um, and I've been working in the animation industry here um, and dipping my feet into the more professional comics industry as well. Um, so what do I do? Comics and animation. Um, <laughs> I've got some different um, uh, viz dev art up there, uh, some uh, strips from my comics, um, and on the top right um, is uh, a picture from uh, the film we made uh, with uh, the Seneca, my Seneca crew, uh, Dracudate. Um, so when you're planning a comic, um, you want to think about how you want to start. Um, what do you want to create? Um, what genre? What medium best suits you? Is it comics? Is it animation? Is it uh, text. Um, and um, yeah, so the best way to kind of go about that at the start is to do a big idea dump. So think about things like, what do you like? You know, maybe put a twist on that. Um, let yourself daydream. Uh, think about things all the time. Just you could spend time uh, just throwing ideas out all the time or hold like a, a memo on your phone, an idea bank. So when you're starting your story, you've got some ideas. Uh, you have to think about your drive. Um, so we want to think about like, uh, we want our characters to do things um, and they are gonna go and do those things, but they need to have a reason to do them. Um, and things that get us to do that is conflict. Uh, so uh, here's some conflict types. Um, they boil down to basically external and internal conflicts. Um, and these will help, um, like there's many different types. Uh, these will help basically, um, uh, your character to uh, show what kind of conflict they're uh, focusing on. Uh, so your character drive has to tie into your conflict. Um, so for example, uh, if you, let's say Ash Ketchum, um, he's going out there to be the very best, um, but you know, uh, if he doesn't really have the drive to do that, then where's that story going, you know? So that's where we come down to wants versus needs uh, in uh, character-driven stories. Uh, you want to focus a lot on these. Uh, so what a character wants uh, is what the character begins to desire at the story. And then what they actually need is revealed towards the end, um, which will show their growth and change. So a lot of cartoonists and uh, um, animation fans will probably know this character, Zuko. Um, from the beginning of his uh, his story, he, he wants to capture the avatar. But in the end, he realizes that what he 
he really needs is a, a group of friends and a, a really supportive family. Um, so a great thing that really helps with a lot of characters and stuff is contrast. Um, so having characters that play off of each other, um, they might be polar opposites, um, at least what you first realize on the outside. But what you'll really realize after introducing the characters more to each other is that they're very similar and that's what helps them grow. Um, and so another thing as well, uh, part of me with the animation student uh, is, is interest in design contrast. So having lots of um, contrast in your characters uh, with shapes and design um, is really helpful in distinguishing each character and their personalities. Um, going off of that, let's try and take that and put that into an arc. Um, so um, we have kind of the beginning of the story, it'll set everything up. You're gonna have kind of the, the initial kind of conflict where the conflict comes into action. Um, you'll have kind of uh, things going up um, and it, things will seem okay, but then they're not. <laughs> and then you go up to the climax and then back down. Um, so twists and reveals. Um, so uh, with a lot of twists and reveals, you have to be careful because you wanna keep things well hidden, uh, unexpected and reasonable. Uh, so it can't just be out of the blue, doesn't make sense. Um, what makes the story special? Um, you know, what makes your story different? Um, has it been told before? Um, and if it has, what can you offer that's different to that story? Um, you know, and maybe it teaches something that people didn't know before, or it teaches like your point of view, uh, which is really important. Um, so dialogue is also a big thing. Um, I remember hearing once that like a great story, um, if it can be told with no words, uh, it is really great. Um, so uh, it's great, especially when you're looking at short stories to think about, can the story be told uh, without words? Does it need words? Uh, and uh, go from there. So I just did a little um, process of, uh, so here's a, an example of a process of a comic, um, but lots of process goes into both comics and animation, lots of people, lots of really talented folks um, go into making something really special. Um, a great way to start is to start small. Um, a lot of us when we're starting comics want to make these 100 page comics right off the bat. Um, but for your first comic or animation, maybe it's good to do a one minute animation, a, a 20 minute comic, just to get your toes in the water and feel out your, um, your writing style and how that works. Um, and the best way to start is to start. So get out there, draw, um, write your uh, stories, you know, um, tell your point of view, um, tell about a really cool story that you thought of um, and just keep going for it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I wanna say thanks. Thanks for listening. I hope um, uh, you had a good time. Uh, I love talking about stories. If you ever wanna talk about stories. Um, yeah, merci. Um, thank you. <laughs> Yay. Thank you, Rael. Uh, the, oh, I'm just going to go back to the side. Should I go back to the side? Yes. If you'd like to get in touch with Rael on and talk about stories and stuff like that, you can go to, you can email them actually at raelmcgregor at gmail.com. Uh, you can also uh, hit up, sorry, hit up their uh, website at raelmcgregor.com. You can also get in touch with Rael on social media. Uh, on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn uh, by going to Race Drawlings, uh, at Race Drawlings, R-A-Y-S-D-R-A-W-L-I-N-G-S. Okay, let's see what people are saying in chat right now. Uh, Gurban's, uh, Gurban's animation says it's going so fast. Yes, welcome to Patakcha. It's nice of you to be here. Uh, Adam Frolik says, yes, shapes are delicious, delicious. I'm sure that means delicious. Uh, time is an illusion, says Christina. Uh, St Stephanie Robinson says, so fantastic. Thank you, merci. Uh, good job, Rael, says Avery Helm. Thank you, Rael, says, says Benson, friend of, the, of, of the, uh, the event, of course. By the way, please go see, say hi to Benson and see, uh, follow his work uh, by going to at Moxum on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, Alice is, is giving you prayer, or the, those hands, those top hands. Rin Claymore. Uh, is giving claps. Kidu Kios is giving you claps. Everyone is excited and happy. Thank you so much, Rael. That was a pleasure. And we'll see you really soon at the end of the show. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll see you in a bit. Okay. Uh, this is it, you guys. We are now at the end of the show. We have one speaker left to go. 
And it's going to be a good one because it's Sherry Lavelle Simons. Did I say that right? Sherry, what was, how did I say that again? I completely forgot to say the L, the, your L. It's Lovell Simons. Thank you so it's much. Sorry enough, about though. that. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. Let me read the intro again. So it's Sherry yeah. Lovell Simons. Sherry Lovell Simons is one of the world masters and founders of Etherworld LARP located in Manitoba, Canada. A fabricator, costumer, and motionographer, they breathe life into a fantasy world in a tangible and digital space. Using formal training as graphic designer, they capture the impactful moments of their players for an outside audience while focusing internally on intimate storytelling and an exploration of alternative lives as heroes, villains, and those along for the ride. So thank you so much, Sherry. Welcome to Pachacha. I'm so glad Thank to you see for you. inviting me. I'm, I'm very really excited. Happy. Yes, I've, I've always wanted to, uh, someone in the LARP world to be here. And uh, I don't think there is as good of a representative for our <laughs> LARPing community as Sherry. So, um, Thank you. well, I'm excited to show you guys what, what Sherry has in store. Are you ready to provide that to our audience today? Yes, absolutely. Ready to go. Okay, excellent. Before we get into that, I just <laughs> want to make sure that I'm reading chat. Darren says, woo, go Sherry. <laughs> uh, Christina Dean says, wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm yelling a lot. Ashley Davis says, Sherry. Rin says, yay, Sherry. Sam Bouchard says, yes. Kayla Dorkson says, Sherry. Sam Bouchard says, Sherry again. Okay. They've had a, a long year with no LARP, so they got to get out all the, exactly. all the energy. I love that. Okay. Are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. Okay. Well, we'll see you at the end of your 20 slides. Thank you. When I was asked to speak, the only big rule that was presented to me was it should be something that you're passionate about. And without hesitation, I knew that the topic that I'd like to share is LARP, not just what it is, but what it can mean for those that participate in it and the benefits that it can bring to their lives. So what is LARP? LARP is live action role playing. Think Dungeons and Dragons, but instead of rolling dice at a table, you're dressing up and living through the adventure in an escape room meets improv setting. The weapons, elf ears, and monsters are fake, but the emotions and ability to explore aspects of yourself through a character as a medium are real. In today's society as a whole, there is an intense dissatisfaction, an inability to feel success that so many goals that the previous generation were able to attain, attain at a young age are at reach. The price of everything has steadily risen. Your job doesn't have a ladder to climb and every task that you take off your plate is in preparation for the next. It's easy to fall into routine and to hit pitfalls of temporary happiness because many parts of life that are mandatory don't feel like accomplishments and doing them doesn't bring you joy. Now you may be thinking, what does that have to do with LARP? And it starts with the human brain is a dumb organ. It's an absolute marvel, but it's also very stupid. My mother would tell me when I was in a bad mood to smile. Your brain doesn't know that it's fake and you'll feel better. And I'd think, how dare you for trying to improve my mood? I have every right to be angry for no reason whatsoever and thus impact your day. But she, like many times before, was right. Your brain and your mood don't care if your accomplishments are real or fake, and you will get the same hit of dopamine whether you finish a writing assignment for class as you will from overthrowing a tyrant king and fleeing his, uh, freeing his oppressed people. The biggest difference is one of these is arguably a, a little more fun to think about. The entire premise of LARP is to place obstacles that are designed to be overcome in the way of players. These obstacles may be part of the overall story, meant to be a collaboration between the players, or they may be created with a specific person in mind based on their personal characters. But no matter how they're designed, they're meant to find resolution in the hands of the players. You are meant to succeed. Even if there is failure along the way, the delayed gratification only makes the success at the end of the journey all the more satisfying. And these successes are celebrated, saving a kingdom, defeating a monster that ravaged a town or treated as no small task. And what you do as a player has impact on the world. Your accomplishments shape the people and places around you. You can see the tone of the story change as you direct it and make choices easy and hard. In our day and age, it can feel difficult to make an impact. Much of your time is dedicated to making ends meet and the grander scale of world issues seem intangible and out of reach. It can be exhausting to pursue change, be it in your job, in activism, in politics, and subsidizing your emotional and mental well-being with activities that give you input that's lacking elsewhere can be a healthy coping mechanism, giving you what you need to meet your real life challenges head on. 
You carry the elation, the excitement, the joy, revelry into your week, as well as the confidence that comes with the task successfully completed. LARP doesn't play just play a key into mental satisfaction. It allows you to explore skills and aspects of yourself that may give you pause in real life, because taking risks without guaranteed success can have lasting consequences. But LARP is a safe space where trying and failing is expected and even encouraged. You can create a character to practice confidence, compassion, to strengthen those qualities in yourself that doesn't just stay in the game. When you have positive experiences, it forges these aspects of yourself stronger. Pretending to be someone with leadership qualities gives you opportunities to try what works and what doesn't in different scenarios. Even though, and eventually you're no longer pretending, you have become someone with leadership qualities. This doesn't stop at skills, but can include gender identity, sexuality, self-expression. In other words, we encourage people to explore these aspects of themselves in a safe space. There's no judgment in who your character is, how they represent themselves, who they love, and that extends to the player themselves. It allows you to try different ways of presenting yourself freely without commitment or question to find what sticks, what you're comfortable with. And if you choose, you can bring these things into your real life. LARP is an experience, a creative outlet, an adventure where you can leave your true world behind, but it also is an opportunity to realize your idealized self, to build skills and qualities that aid you beyond the game and explore aspects of who you are at your own pace without worry, stigma, or pressure to commit to these things. Otherworld itself was created with all the above in mind. The needs of their players, their emotional, mental, and physical well-being, how to empower them while challenging them, how to meet their needs with sensitivity and compassion, and how to wrap all of that in an engaging and thrilling storytelling format. The job of the World Masters is to put the power in the hands of the players, to allow them to grow and thrive, because the more you give to them, the more they give back to you. You create a community of creatives, of friends who support and care for each other, both in and out of game. Every adventure is a team building exercise that allows individuals to shine and be lifted up by their companions to be valued and acknowledged for their unique skills that they bring to the table. Whatever the reason a player creates a character, be it to live out a fantasy of being strong, brave, to conquer fears, to play with visions of themselves, or just to hit things with a giant foam sword, we try to take into account what they want and more importantly, what they need and weave that into the overall storytelling, giving them challenges to overcome and emotionally poignant moments of character growth and a monster or two to beat with aforementioned foam swords. As children, we constantly play. We pretend and we learn and we grow through that. LARP is recapturing that freedom, surrounding yourself with like-minded and supportive individuals that want to share in the experience with you. I love the people that I've met through LARP and the stories and challenges that I've shared with them. And I wouldn't be the person that I am today without it. And I hope to give back and share what I've learned and how it has benefited me with others. And I hope it benefits them as much as myself. So thank you very much for your time and may your dragons be easily slain and may fortune favor the brave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much, Sherry. Thank uh, you. By the way, uh, Sherry's, uh, I, I've been told this many, many times by, by uh, their friends, but Sherry <laughs> it absolutely is one, if, if, if I'm being called a renaissance man, I am not, nothing compared to Sherry, who does all of that work <laughs> in Photoshop, singing, uh, cinematography, costuming, absolutely stunning so please go to their social media pages and uh, follow etherworld etherworld or etherworld Did I? etherworld etherworld yeah. sorry about that either, etherworld either LARP. <laughs> okay uh etherworld larp on instagram and facebook they are severely underrated so please go ahead and follow them if you were inspired by this talk let's go see what people in chat are saying um let's see uh after all of the the cheering uh so proud of sherry says sam Rob Nicolick says, very well put together and useful tips for managing your mental state. Excellent. Olivia Madeline says, this is so inspiring. Uh, Darren Hearsay says, foam sword addiction, exclamation <laughs> point. Uh, Isla says, heckin' cool. Stephanie gives claps. Uh, yes, Sherry, so, so cool. Thank you, Sherry. That that made me miss cosplaying, says Christina Dean, uh, one of the Pachacha uh, team members there. I love being in character and becoming someone else for the day. Killer presentation. Wow. Newfound respect for LARPs is Brian Scott Peterson. 
everyone is loving it. Thank you so much, Sherry. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. I'm so glad to uh, that you've arrived. And, and yeah. arrived. everyone That's should give LARP a try. Once. Absolutely. If you, if you like D&D, if you like escape rooms, and if you like hitting things, it's a really, really good outlet for hitting oh, girl, things legally. I am all about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you we'll see you in a thank few you. minutes for this yeah. curtain call but i do have to close out the show so we'll see you in a, in a few seconds uh that was it that was the last presentation um i thought that was great i miss doing this that that that's yeah i'm so thankful for all of our speakers for being here obviously it's a, it was a very inspiring night and if you want to be a part of that in our next event uh, volume 44, I think it is, uh, please consider speaking at Pachakcha Night Winnipeg by emailing us uh, with your interest uh, by going to Pachakcha Night Winnipeg at gmail.com. You can also just uh, take a little DM or whatever on our and, and do it on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at PKN underscore Winnipeg for Twitter and uh, Instagram. And you can go to Facebook and, and get in touch with us there at Pachakcha Winnipeg. Uh, if you'd like tonight, please be sure to tag us. We'll reshare all of your posts uh, by hashtag, by tagging us and going uh, hashtag PKN Winnipeg, RWPG, excuse me, 43. Uh, this entire stream will be up on this YouTube channel for pretty much ever. So if you want to relive tonight uh, with the chat included, you can see the chat does go along as, as you go as you watch it, uh, you can come back to this YouTube channel and, and see what people were saying uh, and relive it if you miss it. And hopefully that ne the next event won't be too far away so you can relive that with some new speakers who are probably just gonna be just as inspiring. Speaking of speakers though, let's do a final curtain call. Everyone in the speaker, all speakers, please turn on your cameras. We're gonna do a little screenshot. I know it's a little chuggy, but <laughs> you know, let's, uh, let's say hello to everyone. Let's see. Yes, okay, I'm gonna turn my camera off so that I'm not in the shot. So please speakers, please wave goodbye to everyone. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Let me just do a screen. Oh, it's still there. I still have to be in the shot apparently. There we go. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Oh, perfect. Okay, let me, oh, sorry, let's do <laughs> Did I mess that up? Let me just double check that. Let me open up Photoshop just in case. Because <laughs> I think I screenshot like co I copied it instead of uh, make a new file because, you know, Macs are weird. Yes, there we go. Okay, perfect. We're good. There's the screenshot. Thank you so much, speakers. Um, I'm going to go do some final stuff here. So I'm going to share the screen. Everyone in chat, please thank your speakers. Please give them a big round of applause with all of those emojis, all the appropriate emojis. Please no eggplants. Um, we're not here for that. Uh, so there you go. Everyone's saying good job. Congrats, everyone. Hello, beautiful people. This is Isla. You guys absolutely hit it out of the park with this one, says Christina. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, and and that that is it. That's that's Pachacha for you. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, do, do you have anything else to say, speakers, before we go? They're being shy. <laughs> Thank They're you being... for putting on an incredible event and inviting me. I had a lot of fun and enjoyed sharing uh, a little insight into LARP as not just a bunch of nerds in the forest beating each other, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the benefits of, of beating each other. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I'm glad to have you here, of course. Um, anyone else? Is that it, I think? I think that's it. Everyone's having a good time. Great job, everyone, they say. Okay, I think we're just going to, uh, well, let me share my screen again. We'll leave it at that. Thank you guys so much. Good night. We will see you again for volume 44, whenever that is. Keep keep uh, an eye out for uh, the, what's it called? Uh, social media. <laughs> I'm so tired, <laughs> getting hungry. Please keep an eye out on social media for announcements on our, when our next event is. And hopefully that's not too far off. Thank you again. Good night. We will see you soon, hopefully. Bye. And speakers, I guess.